know what these are? Bills. Unpaid bills. Ever since I started this detective agency, I've been swamped with them. Now, when I went to school, I wasn't considered dumb. As a matter of fact, I was a pretty good student. But every time I get a case, something goes wrong. Of course, I could blame my secretary. Oh, just a minute. I'll have you meet her. Susie! What is it, Ross? Meet our friends. Confidentially, we're going to be married someday. That is, if I can never scrape together enough money. Isn't he wonderful? That, no doubt, is my silent assistant, Harvard. Hiya, Susie. Hello. Hello, Russ. Hello, Harvard. Wow. We finally got some clients. Now, wait a minute, Harvard. They're not clients. Everybody calls me Harvard. Maybe because I never went to Yale. Ha! You see what I mean, folks? I love him, but he's plenty D-U-M-B. His sweetheart is Veronica Hoopler. She runs the hamburger stand right near the office. She'll be along in a second. Harvard Oh, here she is now. Veronica, meet the folks. Oh, hello, everybody. Ain't he romantic? Well, that's it. Do you ever... I get it. Dumb. Yeah? Who's dumb now? You forgot to tell them our names. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm Tom Neal. My secretary is Pamela Blake. This is Virginia Sale. And, of course, Harvard is Alan Jenkins. We'll be seeing you all in just a minute. And here's the rest of our cast. Why don't you leave me alone? I'm through. Understand? Through. No, no, you're not. Unless you want your society friends to know what you really are. I'm not giving you another penny. I warn you, I'm finished with blackmail. I'm through with the whole mess. And if you bother me any further, I'm going to the police and tell everything. You won't live long enough. coffee? What for? It'll only keep me awake. Now, don't let it get you down, Russ. The client might walk in any minute. Who can tell? Well, I can tell you one thing for sure. If we don't hustle up some business, we won't have an office for any clients to come to. Well, what are you so gabby about? Huh? I didn't say nothing. Now, don't go picking on Harvard. If it hadn't been for him, we wouldn't even have these. I know all about that, Susan, but after eating hamburgers for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, I'm beginning to look like that guy in the comic strip. You know, I've been thinking, why do they call these hamburgers when they ain't made out of ham? Put this stuff away. Don't let him in till we get set. Might be the landlord. Then take a chance, it might be a client. I'm looking for Ashton. He's busy on the phone. He'll be right with me. Now listen to me, I can't be running down to Washington every week just to solve your tough cases. I'm sorry, that's final. No, money won't make me change my mind. The next time you're up the city, drop around and maybe we'll have lunch, if I'm not tied up. I'm sorry to keep you waiting. What can I do for you? You can't do anything for me. I just wanted to tell you now that your bill's paid, my partner's hooking up your telephone outside. 
Be on any minute now. You can hear Washington much better. Must be great to be a detective. You talk with so many interesting people. Russ, no. Russ, aren't you in enough trouble? Do you want a lawsuit on your hands? Maybe you're right. Say, how did that phone bill get paid? Did you pay it, Susie? No, I only have 61 cents. I did. I borrowed the eight bucks from Veronica. Harvard, you're a genius. That's right. My old man always said I couldn't be that dumb. Hello? Washington. Look, we just had that routine. Quiet, this is on the level. Yeah, this is Ashton. Oh, hello, Miss Worthington. Tonight? Well, certainly, uh, I can be there before 10. Yeah. Goodbye. Mrs. Worthington is wearing the Persian sapphire at a ball tonight. She wants me down there to keep an eye on it. How are you going to get to Washington, Walt? Harvard, uh, see if you can borrow $20 more from Veronica, will you? Well, I'll try, but it won't be easy. I'll meet you down there. Say, you know, I've got to get packed. And while I'm away, Susie, please be careful. Don't mess things up like you did on the Hutton case. I won't. Okay. Russ. Yeah? Are you in that much of a hurry? Oh. Goodbye, honey. Bye. I know, a double. You do. Oh, I'm afraid I'm not in the market for hats this season. Well, I'm not a salesman. I came here to hire a detective. Oh, I'm so sorry. Won't you sit down? Thank you. Oh, uh, tell me your trouble. Well, I would like to see the boss, if I may. Well, that's all right. I'm the boss. Well, uh, I have a partner, that is, practice. I'm suing my wife for divorce, and I need evidence. I know where she spends her nights. What I want you to do is to get a picture of her as she comes out of the building. How would I identify her? I have a photograph over here. Mm, she's nice looking. Yeah, that's the problem. When would you like me to take this picture? Tomorrow morning, at the Embassy Apartments. Be there about 9.30. Do you know where it is? Yes, mm -hmm. Good. Now about the hat box. See, my wife knows that I'm trying to get evidence against her, and she's very suspicious. If she sees anyone with a camera, she'll run. So I put a camera inside the hat box. All you have to do to take her picture is to pull this little gadget here on the side. You think you can do it? Yes, sir. Fine. Now, uh, what's your fee? Would uh, $30, sir? Uh... Oh, no, that's very reasonable. I know. Thank you. Will uh, this be safe here overnight? Oh, yes. Nobody will bother it. Good. I'll drop around tomorrow afternoon for the negative. All right. After you, Miss Hart. Okay, Veronica, you're wonderful. Ah, oh, you're just saying that. 
And that ain't all I'm gonna say. Not again. But Harvey. Do you mind if I ask you a question? Why, of course not. Can you let me have 20 bucks? For that no good boss of yours? I should say not. But he's got a big case. A case of hives? Why don't you get yourself another job, like a motorman or street cleaner, something that pays you a real salary instead of working? Gee, like Veronica, that. don't talk like that about Russ. He says you'll make the best hamburgers in the whole country. He ought to. He's living on them. But look, Veronica, it ain't only for him. It's for me, too. I'll stand good for the 20 bucks. You haven't had $20 in three years. Look, Veronica, he's got to get to Washington. He's got a big case. Please. You want me to do it, then that's different. Hiya, Veronica. Hello, Mr. Ashton. Thanks. May I add my thanks to one whose generosity is exceeded only by her glamorous appearance. Veronica, you know you're getting prettier every day. Would uh, you care for a hamburger? No, thanks. I'll eat on the train. I'll only be gone overnight. Don't let Susan get into any trouble. You know me, Russ. And keep an eye on Veronica, too, so you won't lose her. He's such a nice man. Where'd you say he was going? Washington. Washington? What? Will $20 see him through? You should have asked for more money. Good morning. Good morning, Harvard. What are you so happy about? No hat! Can I see? No, don't touch it. What's in it? A new client. Client? You can't get a client in a box like that. This is part of the case. Case? Now listen, Susie, you know what happened the last time you took a case. The cost is $150. Russ spent three days in jail, I got a black eye. I know, don't keep reminding me. This case is going to be different and our client paid in advance. We owe Veronica $28, don't we? Yeah. We'll pay her back. Well, we might need no it. No buts about it. It's company money. Now hurry before some bill collector gets it. I'm moving over a little bit. You see, I'm going to shoot a woman when she comes out of there. Shoot a woman? Take her picture, I mean. With that hat box? There's a camera in there. Oh. Say, what's your racket? I'm a private detective. Oh. Well, I hope you get a good shot. Thanks a lot. I never miss. Here she comes. Good morning, Mrs. Moran. Good morning, Max. Wish your taxi? Yes, please. a very logical statement. There hasn't been a Mr. Moreland for years. But he said he was Mr. Moreland. Hmm. You'll see when you pick him up. Pick him up? With this description you gave us? Van Dyke. Glasses. Spats. And a cane. Then I'll find him. My dear Miss Hart, you don't seem to realize that you're being held for assault with a deadly weapon. Therefore, you won't be free to find anyone. Furthermore, if Mrs. Moreland dies, you'll be held on a charge of murder. Murder? It's awful. What's awful? Susan, she's in jail. Well, now what's she done? She, she shot a dame. She, what? This morning at 10 o'clock. Come on, you tell me about it on the way over. You say that guy came in with a hat box just after I left? Yes. After what I told you, Russ, Sue. please, that doesn't help. This is serious. I wish I could get my hands on that guy just once. Well, so do the police if they could find him. 
Did the DA say they've gotten any information out of Mrs. Moreland? She hasn't regained consciousness. Well, don't worry, Susie. She'll pull through. She's my only hope. DA doesn't believe me. Well, think hard. Aren't there any clues? Didn't he have any peculiarities? No, it, it's just like I told you. From Mindy came into the office until I shot her in front of the embassy apartment. Embassy apartments. Well, I gotta go now, but I'll be back. Russ. Russ, I, I didn't mean to ball things up like this. I know you didn't, Sue. You're not mad, are you? Of course not. I'm just worried about you, honey. I was only trying to help. I understand. And thanks for paying back that money to Veronica. Don't worry. Everything will turn out all right. <laughs> I tell you to stay away from Marie? Well, she threatened to go to the police. It's okay for you and Joe. She can't identify either one of you. But she's got enough on me to send me to the chair. Besides having Marie Marlin on your hands, you're gonna have to take care of that dame from the detective agency as well. Ah, uh, she couldn't pick me out of a lineup if she tried. Listen, I'm running this show, and if you cross me... Okay, okay, don't get excited. I was just trying... Just nothing. You and Joe run over there and see what you can find. This dame may have written something which will put the finger on us. Did you ever think of that? Okay, okay. Come on, Joe. says I'm worried. Well, any time you can walk by without stopping for a hamburger, then you're either worried or sick. You don't look sick. Well, I don't feel very good. It's Susan and Russ. Oh, well, come on in and have a hamburger. It'll pep you up. Does it look that bad? Better. She's in a who's gown and he's on a wild goose chase. What does he want with a wild goose? Oh, I don't know. Uh, he's looking for somebody he can't find. Wild goose. Say, Veronica, can you make a hamburger out of goose? Sure. Only wouldn't it be a goose burger? <laughs> Boy, someday I'm going to get me a goose burger. Won't that be something? Would you settle for just a plain old hamburger right now? With onions? Ain't we going out tonight? Oh, no, I can't. Not tonight, Veronica. Who was it said that the way to a man's heart was through his stomach? I don't know, Harvard. I don't do much reading. But if only your heart was as big as your stomach. Why, Veronica, I didn't know you felt that way. You can have anything in this place. Anything? Swell. To make that a double order of onions. I'll accept your explanation that you went to the apartment to get evidence to help Miss Hart. But the fact remains, 
You entered the sealed apartment illegally. How do you know the door wasn't open and I just walked in? Well, maybe it was. The policemen who were stationed there admitted that they'd been gone for about 20 minutes uh, investigating a car smash up outside. Are you sure it wasn't one of your men who bought me? If the police hadn't returned when they did, you might have had more than a crack on the head. Could you uh, recognize the men who jumped you? In the dark, all I saw were their fists, and their owners didn't stop to introduce themselves. Now that we've got definite proof that there's somebody else mixed up in this little affair, what about Susan? Well, as a matter of fact, I haven't filed any charges against her yet. Although there are any number of things that I could charge her with. Assault with a deadly weapon, carrying a revolver without But we a know permit. she was tricked into it. Oh, maybe she was. Then she's free? No. We're going to hold her in protective custody for the time being. If there are no charges filed against Miss Hart, I'd like her released. Are you crazy? Don't you realize you'd be putting her life in danger? She could recognize this man, and he knows it. Well, let me worry about that. If no one can pick up this man, it's our one chance to draw him into a trap. Quite a long chance, though. Well, look at it this way. Supposing Mrs. Morland dies, there's no trace of this character who calls himself Mr. Morland. Then she'd go on trial. I'd have no other choice. Can you release her? Ashton, I've dealt with crooks and criminals for over 30 years. And this type is the most dangerous and cunning of all. In my opinion, he'll go after Miss Hart. That's just what we want. Well, I don't follow you. Well, it's simple. Look at it this way. We both know Susan is innocent. And if this guy isn't caught, she'll be left holding the bag. Mm. I see. But you're playing a very dangerous game. Well, it's the one way of drawing him out into the open. Okay. I'll release Miss Hart in your custody. But remember, if anything happens to her, I'll hold you personally responsible. You want any help? Yeah. Break the story to the press that you're releasing Miss Hart. That'll put him on her trail. Okay. <laughs> Now tell me, how did you get me out of jail? I'm like this with the DA. Looking for somebody? Yeah, a man with a hat box. What? That's right, Susan, you might as well know. We're setting a trap for him and you're the bait. Why me? Because you're the only one who'll recognize him. The chances are he'll want you out of circulation. Why? That makes it very nice for me. Well, don't worry, Susie. One of us will be with you all the time. Is that why the DA let me go? That's it. Suppose this character doesn't fall into your little trap. Well, in that case, Miss Hart, the bait goes back to jail. What? What do you know? We must have caught the killer. He must have confessed. And Susan's free. Not quite. First of all, Susie's in my custody for the time being. The killer has not confessed. As a matter of fact, he hasn't even been caught, and Mrs. Morland's still alive. Outside of that, your deductions are 100% right. I don't get it. Oh, it's simple, Harvard. I'm supposed to lure Mr. Hatbox within shooting range, and you two are supposed to get him before he gets me. Is she kidding? No, Harvard, she's on the level. I'm going to follow a hunch. I want you to stick with Susan and don't let her out of your sight. Count on me. Yeah, but despite that, try for once to do what I say. You got your gun? Yeah, right here. Let's have it, Susan. What happened? Well, I don't know. I opened the drawer to give him a receipt. He must have... Who? Mr. Hatbox. Oh, fine, fine. I'll check the serial number on the gun and find out it was one of mine. Gee, Russ, that makes you an accomplice. Ipso facto. So... That's just swell. I always dreamed of spending a ten-year honeymoon up the river. I'm sorry, Susan. We'll get that guy. It's the last thing we do. But if we don't, you can have the office for yourself. Gee, thanks! Ross, where are you going this time? Where a good detective usually starts on a case, at the scene of the crime. And this time, I'd better be good. Say, hey, you wouldn't be trying any shenanigans like the young lady, would you? You mean the young lady who shot Mrs. Morland? That I do, and a handsome young lady she was, too. And to do a thing like that right on my feet. Were you here at the time? That I was, standing... Right in that very spot, right back there. Did you notice anything curious? Curious, to be sure. It's not always that you see a woman shot from a hat box right before your very eyes. Well, I don't mean that. Did you notice anything unusual? 
Only what I told the DA, I, I thought I heard two shots. Now, it may have been only one. Two shots? Well, no, it might have been my imagination. Here, have a cigar. Oh, thanks. <laughs> uh, do you mind telling me where Mrs. Moreland was standing at the time she was shot? Why, well, yeah, what, about right like that. Right there. Yes, sir. And the girl? Well, she was back that way about five feet. I see. You mind holding this? I'll over that way a little bit. That's about here, this angle. Hey, Flint, come here. There's that private detective down there pumping the cop. I wonder what he's measuring. I don't know, but I don't like it. I'll fix him right now before Listen he gets... Listen here, trigger-happy fool. What are you going to get knocking off that private dick? It's the thing that's working for him that we want. Now, uh, tell me, uh, how tall was Mrs. Moreland? Why, uh, uh, she hit me about there. Would you mind getting down to that height? Yes, sir. That's fine. Now, which way was she facing? Well, uh, about like that. Just I about see. like that. Huh? You know, I could kiss you. Oh, no, don't you try it. Don't you try it. Oh, here, have another cigar. Now what's happened? There's always a silver lining on the sunny side of the street. You mean things ain't so bad anymore? Things are getting better. It wasn't me. I haven't got time. Would you give me a pack of cigarettes for Susan? Oh, have a cup of coffee. You look tired out. Well, I ought to be getting back. All right. Did you? Come part of this, heart. I gotta beat it, Veronica. Will you put it on the cuff? See <laughs> what a romantic guy. On the cuff. Oh. Susan, here you. Harvard was just telling me that everything's okay. You mean he was here? Well, just for a second, he... Wait till I get my hands on that guy. Russ! Russ! Am I glad to see you? What's wrong? Susan is missing. What? I went back to the office and she's gone. Well, get back there in case she phones. I'm going to the DA. Something's happened to Susan Hart. I know it. You found her? Yes, in your office. I sent one of my men and picked her up. I know that character got her. Hey, what's the idea? Mrs. Moreland died earlier this afternoon, and I'm holding Susan Hart. Well, that's ridiculous. You might just as well accuse me. I'd like to, but I can't. Even though one of your guns was used, I know you were out of town. What I discovered this afternoon will definitely prove that Susan Hart did not kill Mrs. Moreland. Russ, I'd like to help you. But in view of the evidence... Just the, the same, if I can convince you of her innocence. Will you withhold the information of Mrs. Moreland's death for another 24 hours? Well, I'll listen. This may be your only chance to catch the real murderer. What is your plan? Well, here's the idea. Susan! Boy, did you throw a scare into us? What happened to you? Oh, I've been visiting my old friend, the DA. Hey, you two. Come over here and listen to this. And now for the local news. Here's a flash just handed to me. Mrs. John Moreland, wealthy widow who was shot while in front of her apartment house in the so-called hatbox mystery, was not seriously wounded as at first supposed, but merely suffered a flesh wound. Mrs. Moreland has been discharged from the hospital and has returned to her home. How do you like that? She told this reporter in an exclusive interview that tomorrow morning she will place on the DA's desk evidence which will point the finger of guilt at the perpetrator of the now famous hatbox mystery. You and your smart ideas for covering up. Well, he's liable to spill all she knows by tomorrow, and that might mean the big house for us. I want you and Joe to walk over to that apartment house and keep your eye on it every minute until she shows up. And when she does...
Russ, something's troubling you. Please tell me what it is. I've been trying to think of an easy way to tell you this, Susie. I hate to break it to you this way, but there isn't much time. Mrs. Moreland is dead. Dead? Oh, no. Well, what? The radio commentator just... I know, dear. He just said what he'd been told to say. Dead. And I killed her. I get it. That's to make the killer think Mrs. Moreland is still alive and is out to get him. Right. Only he'll try to get her first. What a trap. And when he goes to the apartment, the police will be there to nab him. Well, not quite. Our plan is to keep the police away. They might scare him off, but I'll be there to greet him. Do you want me to go along for help? No, I'll handle this alone. I'll phone you as soon as I get there, so don't worry. Russ, please be careful. All right, all right. But remember, stay here until you get my phone call. And if you let Susie out of your sight, I'll break your neck. <laughs> Down under this newspaper. Get in that car. If this is a stick up, you're wasting your time. Don't give me any gap. I'll move or I'll give it to you right here. Well, it's a nice night for a ride. Yeah. You don't leave here for nothing. We can't starve, can we? We'll call Veronica up. You know she can't leave the place. There's only one way out. Either you go or I go. Well, it's got to be me. But somebody might come after you. We'll lock the door and turn out the lights. They'll think no one's here. Hey, that's smart. If I go, you sure you won't be scared? No. Know how to use it? I'm afraid I do. Lock it from the inside, too. Okay. Gonna talk? It's no use, Flint. You won't get anything out of him. Keep an eye on him, Joe, till we get back. Stevens, we're going over and talk to Mrs. Moreland. You going too? Yeah. I can't trust you to do anything right. Come on. Nice, pleasant people, aren't they? You'll find out later. Done with Russ. Take it easy, Miss Hart. After all, I'm your old friend, John Morland, remember? Only this time without the beard. You tell me what you've done with him, Ralph. <laughs> now, we'll ask all the questions. What do you and this dumb cluck think you're doing here? 
Come on, start talking. I won't tell you anything. I'm afraid we're going to have to insist, Miss Hart. Come on. So I walked over to the two big mugs and knocked their heads together. That's how I got the $10,000 reward. <laughs> you don't like that story, I got another one. You ever hear the one about the mama bear and the papa bear and the baby bear? Mama bear was a Democrat, papa bear was a Republican. Baby bear was too young to vote. And then there was me. Now tell us, where is Marie Moreland? I'm sorry I hurt you, Harvard. I, I sure made a mess of everything. What are you guys trying to do? Sort of fair hand. Don't! Now, how about Mrs. Moreland? Or do I have to give him a real working over? If you want to save him, you better talk and talk now. She's dead. Dead? What do you mean, dead? She's supposed to be here. We heard it on the radio. That was a trap for trick you. Yeah, but you got caught in your own little trap, didn't you? When Russ gets here... He's been detained. What have you done to him? Nothing yet, but he won't bother us. Say, Flynn, I've got an idea. Yeah? How about getting Miss Hart here to sign a confession saying that she murdered Marie Moreland? You murdered her. You tricked me into it. I won't confess to anything I didn't do. You'll do as we say, or I'll start to go to work on him right now. All right. Write this. I, Susan Hart, shot Marie Morland because she was blackmailing me for a crime I committed Two years ago. Hey, that's a nice angle. I like it. Sign it. What good is the confession if she's going to be around to deny it? Lint, what would you do in her place if you just signed the confession? found yourself up in a tall building. I see what you mean. We're glad to see you, Mr. Ashton. The DA got word and sent us home. Well, let's shade up, Stevens. Let me go. You wouldn't dare. I wouldn't, eh? did work out the case. Well, it's a long story. Where should I start? At the beginning. Where should you start? No, no, I can't come down there. Well, you've got to make the price higher. Yeah. Hold it, Russ. It's the VA. Well, well, this is an unexpected pleasure. Sit down. I thought I'd come over personally to thank you for the way you handled the Headbox case. I must admit, though, I had a few squeamish moments. Weren't alone. I wasn't in no tea party. Did Moreland confess that he tricked me? No, he didn't confess because it was not necessary. We knew that you didn't do it. Russ proved by his measurements and deductions that you couldn't possibly have fired the shot at Mrs. Moreland from where you were standing. That's why I released you in his custody. Oh, Russ, I'm so glad I didn't shoot Mrs. Moreland. Susan, honey, that was one thing I was positive of. You never did get anything that straight. <laughs> I did fire a bullet at her, though. No. What you fired was a blank. I'm afraid he hoodwinked you all around. Stevens was his real name, and he returned to this office the night he hired you. 
He had slipped the latch on the door earlier in the day when he left the office with you, making it very convenient for him to return later. The camera in the hat box he left with you was rigged up with a gun. But Stevens got the idea of replacing his gun with yours at the time you gave him the receipt with your gun in the drawer. He also got the idea of removing a bullet from your gun and replacing it with a blank, so that when you fired the gun, you would think it was your bullet which actually killed Mrs. Moreland. However, it was always his intention to fire the death bullet, but he didn't want two bullets found after he killed Mrs. Moreland. So having you fire a blank at the same time he fired the real bullet was, in his opinion, a stroke of genius. How did a society woman like Mrs. Moreland get mixed up with this gang? We don't know yet, but we do know that Stevens was secretly blackmailing her by threatening to expose her connection with the gang. Why, that dirty crook! And worse than that, he was a dangerous killer. He simply wanted to try and throw the crime on someone else. Actually, Miss Hart, Stevens tried to fire the death bullet at the very same time you fired from the hat box. So you see, it was really Stevens who fired the shot, not you. Just like I figured. Oh, Russ. You want a receipt? Uh-huh. Hey, I'm going to get out of here. <coughs> goodbye, Russ. Uh, goodbye, D.A. Yes. Sometimes when I get stuck again, I'll give you a call. All right, goodbye, all. Goodbye. goodbye. Oh, oh, excuse Martin. me. Oh, Martin. Oh, Martin. 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 Turn on the radio, the hat box mystery has been solved. Oh, I knew you would do it, Harvard, even though Russ and the police threw obstacles in your way, just like you sold me and let you get all hurt. Oh, oh I've got to get back to the stand now, but I'll see you later. Look, Russ, I didn't say anything. Action Detective Agency, Russ Ashton speaking. Mr. Moore at the Massey Arms? Yes. You mean to guard a duke? Be very happy to handle it for you, sir. Yes, that's right. Thank you. Well, it isn't every day you get a chance to guard a duke. You know, I wish I could get my good suit out of Hawk. It only takes fifteen dollars. Yeah. I guess. Harvey! Oh,